Hi, it's Mrs. Greesock, and I'm going to teach you how to make a geometric mandala that we are going to turn into a color wheel. You are going to need your compass. I'm going to use this kind of compass, the flat kind. There are other kinds of compasses, right? You can get the kind that you put your pencil on one side and it has a point on the other and you can open and close it. Um, this just seems to work better for my students. Um, for my students, you're going to notice that one of these little holes has been um, darkened. There's a circle around the one that's by the three inch mark and that's the one that we're going to use. It's very important that you use the same hole for all your marks. And the reason for that is um, we're going to be doing some mathematics where we need to know what the radius of our circle is. And um, we need to always use the radius. If you use one of these different holes, then it's not gonna be the right measurement. You're gonna need something to draw straight lines with. A ruler is nice, especially if it's a good ruler. This one is missing some of its marks, but it's got a nice straight edge. Um, and you're going to need a sharp pencil. Obviously, you're going to also need a piece of paper. Um, if you have a piece of paper that that's square that's gonna be the best if you don't have a piece of paper that's square you need to cut it so that it is square because the method that we're going to use is going to involve connecting the corners to each other so your paper should be um, perfectly square if you can get that okay what are we going to do we are going to make a mandala ours is going to be geometric we're going to use a lot of straight lines um, to create a really cool and interesting pattern. And the more interesting your pattern is, the better your grade's going to be. So I want you to try and challenge yourself and do something super creative if possible. This happens to be one of my demonstration ones from last year, um, but we're gonna start a new one today. Okay, let's talk for a second about the math. So you have your circle, you know where the center is, you know how you made the circle. If I put this back, you can see that I used that exact same slot to make the circle. You can put your pencil in and spin it around. You gotta go underneath your arm and you can make your circle, okay? As long as this middle part doesn't slide while you're doing that, <clears throat> you'll get a nice looking circle. But how do we divide the circle into 12 parts? Because our color wheel has 12 colors and so we need our geometric design to have perfect 12 parts. You guys, you cannot just take your ruler and divide it in half, chicka chicka, chicka chicka, chicka chicka, you know, going, um, uh, making an X and a plus, okay? That's gonna give you eight. We need 12. And um, making a, uh, a number, uh, uh, dividing a, a shape into a number that's divisible by three is kind of tricky. But with a circle, we happen to know that the radius will fit around the outside edge of your circle exactly six times. What that formula actually is, I don't know. It's really not anything to do with the circumference. It more has to do with making a hexagon inside of a circle. But the radius will help us do that perfectly. So if we use our compass, we can find the six points around our circle perfectly well with the radius. However, we need 12. So then we're going to need to divide that in half. Well, there's an easy way to do it. If you look at this illustration, you can see that there's a line going from corner to corner because this point and this point are directly across from each other. Actually, they're all directly across from each other. But this helps us a lot because what we can do then is we can draw a line from this corner to that corner, chicka chicka, and we'll get two more marks. And then we can easily use the radius of our compass again to find the remaining four, okay? So that's the mathematics of it. Let's put that into practice. What you're going to do is you're going to take a blank piece of paper. This paper is square, right? Take your square paper, take your ruler, not your compass yet, take your ruler and connect the opposite corners. So draw a line from this corner to that corner. Shika shika, there we go. And now do the same to the opposite two corners. Shoo, just like that. Okay, now we have an X on our paper. Um, this spot where that X crosses is going to be the center of our circle. Make a nice dark dot right there where the two lines cross. All right, now it's time for the compass. Take your compass, put this little brass ring that's in the center 
right on that dot, like so. And you're going to hold that with your finger. Now hold your hand up so that your compass can slide freely. This is important, you guys. Your compass needs to slide freely. If it doesn't, it's not gonna work. Um, if you can't hold this still, it's not gonna work. You need to be able to hold the white part still while the orange part moves in order for this to work, okay? So I'm gonna hold that and I'm gonna put my pencil in this hole, the one that has the black ring around it, the one that's by the three inch mark. Some of you might not be able to see that three anymore because the black um, outline is kind of covering it up, but that is the one that you need to use. And it's important that you always use that same one. Put your pencil in there and then slide it around, go back under your arm so that you can connect your circle together. And now you have your circle. You also have our first four points of interest. You guys, I am gonna be talking about points of interest as we go because that is going to be how we create our fancy designs later. So it's important that you know what I'm talking about when I say points of interest, okay? So these are our first four points of interest. They will help us. Okay, now, because we know that the radius will fit around exactly six times and we got the first four points already marked for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the center of this compass on one of those points of interest like this. And we're gonna hold it again so it doesn't slide. And we're gonna mark our circle in two places. We're gonna mark it over here and we're gonna mark it over there. Both places have to have a mark. Now, the way we're gonna do the mark is we're just gonna make a little slash, a little line that goes across the circle. So like this, I'm gonna put my pencil in there. I'm gonna move the compass like this, right? So that it's on the edge of the circle or near the circle. And then put your pencil in there and slash, whoosh -ha, the circle like this. You're making a slash mark across the circle. And do the same thing on the other side. You must do both sides, slash, whoosh. Um, because you need the mark to be on both in both directions. So when you do that, what's happening, let me see if I can zoom in without wiggling this too much. What's happening is you can see um, kind of how it makes an X, right? So this exact place right there where the X crosses the circle, that's our next point of interest. The point of interest is the only thing we're concerned with. We don't need that slash. The slash is just helpful to, to see exactly where the point of interest is. On this side, um, it's gonna be right there. Okay, now let's see if I can zoom out. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna keep going now. We have our first two points of interest. They came from this dot. Now turn your paper slightly, go to the next dot right here, put your compass on that one and slash to the right, and slash to the left, okay? Where those two slash marks are, make your next points of interest there and there, right on your circle, okay? Turn your page to the next one and put your compass on the next point of interest here. Okay, remember we're doing the four points of interest that are on the X, okay? Don't get confused by going to those. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything, but it's not gonna help you. Slash on the left, slash on the right. Make a dark dot where your point of interest is. And then we're gonna to go to the last one right here. Put your compass on the dot, slash to the right, whoa. slash to the left, whoa. and there are your last remaining points of interest. Now we have a circle that has 12 points on it. We're part way there, okay? We can start to see how our mandala is gonna be formed. You can erase these slash marks, make sure you leave the point of interest because we need that, but the slash marks do get a little annoying and we definitely don't want them. Sorry about the wiggling, I didn't realize that it's gonna wiggle my table so much. There we go, there we go, good enough. All right, now you can take your straight edge, your ruler, and find one of your points of interest, 
line it up with the center dot, and you're gonna notice, hopefully, you're gonna notice that it also touches the dot on the far side of your circle. When you draw this line, I want you to draw the line all the way through the whole page because we want our mandala to go all the way out to the edge if possible, okay? It's gonna help us later when we're painting, just so you know, um, so, so you can have a nice piece of square paper that has 12 parts on it. Draw your lines all the way through the paper. Make sure that the three dots are in alignment. If they're not in alignment, you guys, then you did something wrong, okay? Um, if they're just slightly out of alignment, like just a tiny bit, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. But if they're very, very, very far off, then um, you're gonna wanna start over, okay? So you did something wrong. Or come get me, right? I'll, I'll help you in class. So now we have the beginnings of our mandala, right? We have a nice square piece of paper. We have 12 sections. They're all perfectly even. Now we can start to zhuzh it up a bit. Now we can start to add details to this. And the first thing that we're going to do is draw some concentric circles, okay? Concentric circles are circles that have the same center. So what you're going to do is you're gonna put your compass back on the center. Now it's time for you to be creative. You can make small circles, you can make big ones. As long as this little brass ring stays on that center dot, um, make a few more circles. I would say two or three circles are what you'd want. Let me make one that's kind of big, kind of close out here to that first one. Um, by the way, since this is the part where you get to be creative and do your own thing, guess what? You should probably not copy me. Do something different than what I'm doing, right? Do your own thing. Um, these circles do not have to be evenly spaced. They can be anything you want. Oh, look what I just did. So I put the center, the center is still there on the middle, but instead of holding the white part still and going out here, I held the orange part still and I spun this around. You can make small circles that way. So now I have one big one, one small one. Let's do one that's maybe just a little bigger than the small one, one that's right about here, okay? So take some time and make at least three, two or three concentric circles, circles that have the same center as that one. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our points of interest again. Now that we've made some concentric circles, we have a million more points of interest. So wherever one of these circles crosses one of those straight lines, we have another point of interest. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. So we have all of these points of interest and they're on every single line. Take some time right now, you guys, and put a little dot on every point of interest. Any place where the circle crosses a straight line, um, that's what you're gonna get. So. You guys, we're so close. At this point, you're gonna have creative freedom to create your mandalas. I'm gonna remind you something about a mandala. A mandala is always symmetrical. It has something that we call radial symmetry. Radial symmetry means that it mimics itself as it repeats around the circle. And each section has to be the same as all the other sections. So since we have 12 parts, every time you make a connection between two points of interest, you're gonna repeat it 11 more times because you gotta have 12 of everything. So keep that in mind, but you get to make any connection you want. As long as you can do it exactly the same 12 times, it's going to make a beautiful pattern. Let me give you an example. I'm going to, I'm gonna give these some numbers, right? So my inside point of interest is gonna be a one, this is gonna be a two, this is gonna be a three, and this is gonna be a four. Now that's the same, and please do not write these numbers on your work because that's going to um, drive you crazy and it's gonna drive me crazy because it's gonna look bad. But I'm gonna do it for the video purpose so that you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna number a few of them, not all of them. But every single point of interest on this inside circle is a one. Every point of interest that's on this circle is a two and a three and a four and so on. So let's take my number one from this line, this number one, 
and I'm gonna connect it with a straight line to, let's say, my number three on the next line. So this line is here, that line is there. I'm gonna connect my number one to my number three. I'm gonna draw a straight line from here to there. Okay, there's my connection. Now, remember I told you, every time you do one thing, you gotta do it 11 more times, so you get 12 of them. So I gotta go around and do this to all of my sections so that every single one of my sections has a number one connected to a number three. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a pattern start to form, okay? It's gonna look a little bit like a star, this one. It's gonna be a star that leans to the left. Um, if you don't want your star to look like it's leaning to the left, um, you can go back and connect your number one to your number three going the opposite direction. And I'll show you what I mean in a second as soon as I finish all 12 of these. There you go, you can see there's my pattern starting to go. Now what I can do is I have my number one here, my number three there. I can connect my number three back to the number one on the next one this way, and that will make my star pattern a little more even. So I can go like that, and I'm going to get some overlapping. It's okay to have overlapping. In fact, the overlapping can make even new patterns and new points of interest that can help you make even more cool designs. The more points of interest that you connect, the fancier your design will get, and the more creative you will, you know, be your, your, your your color wheel will be more creative, right? Um, I want you to try to zhuzh it up as much as you possibly can. Just remember to always do things 12 times, right? So you can see I'm starting to get a pattern there. Remember, we got these points of interest out here too. We can connect those. We can make an X right there. We can do that on all of this, the sections. Um, we can we can do so many things. We have new points of interest in here. We can connect these to different things. There's so many things that you guys can do. And every time I do this, it turns out different. Like this one has really pointy things. Look at this one. This one has all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Look at all those lines that I have inside there. What I did after I drew all my lines is I darkened some that I thought were the prettiest to make a pattern. And that's what you're going to do. And then later we're going to write the color names in there. And of course, we're going to paint it eventually. So... Um, have fun making your geometric mandalas, and there you go.